uh, esteemed vice chancellor of uh, cotton university professor bc goswami esteemed chairperson nct sri santosh kumar sarangi uh, the member sec secretary nct uh, ms kesang uh, sherpa uh, ma'am uh, neelma bhagwati the chairperson of eastern regional committee nct uh, dr vn sharma the vice chancellor of uh, arnode university arunachal uh, the officials uh, from nct my uh, committee member ms khushbu and uh, dear uh, participants coming from across the educational uh, panorama and uh, different institutions different places of northeastern uh, states india has been a seat of learning since time immemorial and uh, i believe that that seat of learning was more or less it was a community based and uh, a kind of uh, uh, culture in the community to learn from one another and uh, from from the experiences from the elders and all and uh, of course we had the formal system of education also in those days and we had wonderful uh, institutions like uh, nalanda university takshila university vikramshila universities and all that but uh, the learning was more or less it was community seated uh, if we see the vision of national education policy uh it talks about uh, transforming this uh, nation again i mean it is reminding the country of that glorious phase of uh, india uh, when india used to be uh, a, a, a shining country uh, leading in the field of wisdom and knowledge and showing path to the world entire world Uh, when the entire world even the today's what we call uh, them as the most developed countries the european countries uh, and uh, american uh, country uh, they 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 were limping those days when india was signing and writing wonderful scriptures those days so that was that was the concept in india and this policy talks about it is it is a kind of what i find is that it's a kind of reminding reviving uh, uh, those those uh, era and uh, uh, bringing that into the mainstream and relating it to the modern times of education so the policy envisions that okay now we should have a kind of education system uh uh which will which will transform the entire country this nation uh into an equitable and uh, a knowledge vibrant knowledge society okay fine and then by providing the the high quality high quality education to all i i i i, I repeat it to all i mean each uh, child each citizen of this country a uh, high quality education providing high quality education so that the the country becomes a a knowledge hub a global knowledge hub and a global knowledge society a, a leading leading country in the world in terms of education in terms of knowledge in terms of innovation and all and according to this vision uh, many recommendations are there in place and uh, they are being implemented in different forms now we are here uh, we 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 understand if we look at uh, the uh, the policy or uh, 2020 nep 2020 we find that an a focuses on the the 21st century skills 21st century skills i i remember the dellers report in 1996 which was constituted mainly Uh, uh to to decide the aims of education in 21st century there also there was there were the important uh, pillars uh, pillar that was 
a lifelong learning lifelong learning and here also in 21st century skills uh, when we talk of 21st century skills which are really the need of the hour and uh, which are there to catch up the world the progressing world uh, today as on today and in the coming days uh, those skills are really meaningful and i would say that see the innovation and creativity the highest kind of those uh, who are from education background uh, it is the apex of the 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 educational objective the creation the creativity uh, the synthesis and the innovation it it is at the helm of the uh, educational objective similarly is the critical thinking and uh, problem solving and one very important thing it talks about the policy talks about is the agility the adaptability and lifelong learning again just just see this lifelong learning i am just reminding you where is the departure so this is the lifelong learning and uh, uh, then we have many 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 other 21st century skills like teamwork and collaboration and uh, experiential learning and uh, the the uh, digital competence uh, which is the need of the hour in different forms and uh, uh, we we want to uh, produce the global citizen so sustainable development and uh, 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 well being of the entire world that concept has to go through education in india because now we are uh, there to become a global citizen and will be everywhere so that flexibility and adaptability should be there so that our future students and citizens they can cope up with the with the anxiety and tensions uh, and and uh, the the pressures coming from the surroundings when they go to different countries to work find livelihood and other things so these are there and then indian knowledge system and uh, there are other things vocational education multidisciplinary approach these are the latest things which the world is practicing the best countries uh, the finest education system in the world uh, is practicing these things the multidisciplinary approach uh, the integration how to integrate and uh, how to bring all these th things together and to to produce uh, before the child and uh, uh, instill in the child to create something new i think uh, this integration technology this multidisciplinary approach uh, uh, this this outlook uh, creating this outlook mindset uh, in children and teachers i think uh, these are uh, the vocational part of this these are some of the things which are cross cutting uh, right from early childhood care and education to the higher education cross cross cutting things these are cross cutting things uh, and uh, they have to be incorporated in the curriculum in the pedagogy in the assessment process so that the it the policy and visions that we are going to produce a well rounded a well rounded citizen a, a holistic uh, development in the citizen that is what our vision is uh, in policy and we have to implement it now uh, okay fine the 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 formal system of education is is one i still believe as a student of education that the classroom is the crucible is the furnace where you bring all the philosophies where you bring all the ethos all the techniques together to 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 uh, uh, to develop something in your students so it is your testing testing point but it is not enough it is not enough when we think of the lifelong learning when we think of uh, the continuous learning and that that matters that matters a lot so this continuity of learning throughout the life the lifelong learning the self learning the self assessment the use of metacognition the reflection in the mind and understanding our own mistakes involving engaging in the work assessing oneself and then proceeding further by correcting the mistakes errors i think uh, it's a wonderful process and it amounts to the life learning it amounts to the continuous development it amounts to the evolving process in education what we call it as 
evolving, uh, learning, evolving, and growing. Uh, this is what it should be inbuilt. It should be inbuilt. And so for that, uh, the policy is very loud enough. I have seen at four points, uh, they have brought this concept of mentoring. So the mentor word has appeared in four paras, four points. I remember that 12.3, it talks about that the duty, the role of faculty is not only to teach, but also to act as a mentor and a guide. It talks about it, it loudly says, clearly says. So 12.3, if you look at the 15.1 uh, para, it talks about that this teacher education should be, should be there under the guidance of a brilliant mentor, a brilliant mentor. So the teacher education program should be con conducted under the leadership of a great mentor, a good mentor. It's, it's, it's using this term mentor, not the teacher or trainer or a teacher educator. So this is there. And then 15.11, I mean, it is there before you that it talks about the establishment of a mission, uh, a mission, national mission for mentoring. Uh, just uh, two minutes, uh, I will take. So national mission for mentoring and uh, even the 23.3, that para talks about creating a platform, educational technology, national educational technology forum or uh, to exchange the idea. So we see that the policy talks about uh, the creation of a new culture of learning and which is a kind of mentoring which, which talks about the continuous and uh, uh, lifelong learning, continuous development. Now, the, the, we, as per, uh, as per uh, policy, we have the developmental goals. We have decided the developmental goals for children. We have decided the goals for teachers. We have decided the goals for uh, institutions. We have decided the, the uh, uh, we have decided the modalities uh, how to prepare the teacher teachers we have uh, decided the competencies and learning outcomes so what i mean to say is now our goal posts are clear according to and it is aligned with the policy so goal post is clear now how to how to be successful how to create a successful student how to create a future citizen global citizen uh, uh, through our institutions and through our society we have to create a learning culture a self learning culture a continuous development culture a, a continuous learning culture and a, a, i would say that a culture uh, this this learning culture should be taken as a mission uh, the policy talks about the foundational literacy and the numeracy mission. But I suggest, I say that uh, as this learning, uh, uh, continuous learning, whether it is seated in the, uh, uh, it, is, it is for the students, whether it is for teachers, whether it is for the institutions, uh, within the institutions, that culture, the concept of a school complex is there in the policy. It is mainly to me, it appears that it is to create that culture culture among the teachers, professional culture among the teachers. So that culture of learning, the self-learning and growing, uh, and uh, learning from the experiences from, uh, of elders, experiences from others, and uh, then growing, inbuilt in the mechanism. I think uh, for that sake, this mentoring uh, mission is important. It will supplement, I, I, I say, it will, it will go a long way, it will compensate, uh, and it will be all evolving, growing, and, and achieving the goals of policy, and achieving the goals of lifelong learning. So a mission is there. For this, uh, NCT has constituted uh, the committee, and the committee has come out with uh, the draft document. This document is in six sections, the first section talks about the context, the Indian scenario of uh, educational structure and all those things. The second section talks about the challenges here as uh, in the first session we have seen that
that the divide, the technological divide in this country and the, the crunch, uh, resource crunch and all those things in the system. Uh, so it talks about the challenges, second section. Third, fourth and fifth sections, it talks about purely what is mentoring, what is, uh, who makes a good mentor, who is a mentee, a good mentee, the characteristics, the myths and the concepts related to that, and what is the mentoring mechanism. Uh, uh, all those things are discussed in these three things, the different model, models of mentoring and modes. And then last section talks about inst institutionalizing this mentoring. Uh, to sustain this program in the country so that it will go a long way. It's, it should not be a casual uh, casual kind of uh, intervention in, in, in education sector. So with all these words, uh, I, I, I believe that this document has come, uh, come out with a, with a uh, deep uh, deliberations and interactions among the members and uh, the feedback uh, we have got. And now uh, this is the second phase. I believe that uh, there would be very, very important uh, suggestions and deliberations here, discussions on this, and it will uh, help improve the document further. So I wish you all the best. Thank you very much and hope a very live interaction in this session. Thank you.